Hi everyone! In this video I will show you how to install and use OBS Video Scheduler, a small project I have created for anyone running their broadcasts with OBS to be able to schedule video playbacks and have them turn on and off automatically during the broadcast. We start on a GitHub page for this project, which describes what the project is and how and why it was created. What we are interested in is how to install it. So let's click the link here and open the manual page. At the moment the scheduler only works on Windows and with 64-bit OBS, so this is what we will be using for this tutorial. The first thing we will need to do is to install common C++ libraries which both OBS and scheduler depend on. So we can follow the link to the Microsoft website here, download 64-bit version of these libraries, run the installer, agree to all the terms and conditions and that's how it's done. Next let's install OBS itself. We can go to obsproject.com, download the recent version of OBS for Windows, run the installer We will need to remember the folder which OBS will be installed to because we will need it to install the OBS plugin which will be the next step. And now we have OBS installed. Next let's install the OBS plugin which is a necessary part of the scheduler. We can go to the latest release page, download the library file from here, and install it to our OBS by simply copying it to the OBS plugins folder. Next, let's make sure that our plugin was installed correctly. We can run OBS and check the log. We can find the current log file. We will need to see the plugin that we just installed in the list of successfully loaded modules. If you don't see that the plugin was loaded successfully, that likely means that something went wrong during these initial steps. You can look for the error in the same log file and Google it to see why the plugin isn't loading correctly. If everything went well, we can now install the scheduler itself. The scheduler is implemented in Java, so as a first step, let's install Java. We can download the latest Java release from the Oracle website. Here we will need to go to the download page and find the 64-bit Windows version. Let's run the installer. We will need to remember the folder where Java being installed because we will need it for the next step. Now that we have Java installed, let's add it to Windows environment variables. We will need to find the Java folder in your program files. Copy it, and 
go to environment variable settings create a new variable called java home and copy the path there one last dependency that we'll need is ffmpeg ffmpeg is a suite of programs for video processing that the scheduler uses we can go to ffmpeg.org to install it let's go to the download page and pick the Windows builds built by BTBN. Let's download the Windows 64-bit version powered by GPL. Open the archive. Copy its contents. Create a special folder for FFmpeg. and paste the contents here. We will also need to add it to the path environment variable. Let's go to the folder with binaries and copy the path. Let's open the environment variables editor. Find the path variable here and add a new line with path to ffmpeg. Now we are ready for the final step. Let's download the install script for the scheduler. Find it in our downloads folder. Copy the file. Create a new folder for the scheduler. and paste the file here. It's important that you don't try to install it in the program files folder. Program files is a special Windows folder that requires certain permissions from programs installed in it. Now we will need to start PowerShell, which is Windows execution environment for scripts. We will start it in the administrator mode, navigate to the folder we created for the scheduler, and allow script execution with the command we can copy from the manual. This command will allow the script downloaded from GitHub to run. You can copy the command and enter it in the PowerShell. Next, we will run the script. Script will ensure that you have Java and FFmpeg installed and it will also download everything necessary for the scheduler to work. Now we can go to the scheduler folder. Now let's start OBS and the scheduler. We can see that the scheduler started and we can open it in web UI. Here we can see that it's connected to the OBS running locally. Before we can actually schedule videos, we would need to double check a couple of important settings. The first is the directory with all the videos that you would want to schedule. In my case, it's a folder videos on disk D. Second is the scene name where you would want your videos to be scheduled. In my case, it's scene one because that's the default OBS uses. Let's go back to the main interface. Here, you can see all the videos from the folder you've specified in settings. If we open this folder in File Explorer, we will actually see the videos there. Now, let's schedule a playback. 
We can schedule it with a schedule button here and move it on the timeline with drag and drop. Removing a video from the schedule is a double click on it. Let's schedule a video and see what happens with OBS when it is supposed to start. Here we can see the countdown until the video starts. You can see that the video was automatically added to OBS as a media source. It will be automatically removed once the video is over. Here we can see the countdown until the video is over. And now it's removed. Thanks for watching this video. You can find more information about how to install and use the scheduler in the manual. In my next video, I will talk about more advanced features that the scheduler supports, such as custom video dimensions, custom layer, list of sources you can automatically mute and unmute when the video is scheduled, and adding a disclaimer to your video. If you encounter any problems with the scheduler, don't hesitate to reach out to me on my personal email or on the OBS forum. I hope this video was helpful and you will find the scheduler useful for running your broadcasts.